Hey guys, welcome back. It's Lucky Ghost here. The first thing we're going to discuss is a massive one, and it's going to be why everything we talk about after it is so important. And that is the fact that there's only one save state in this game. You can't have multiple save files. You can't have branching saves. You can't save right before an important event and then reload an old save to undo the mistake that you just made. You've got one save state and the game auto saves for you. So if you were safe scumming your way through Baldur's Gate 3, get ready to live with the decisions of your actions or inactions in Dragon's Dogma 2. Now, the first place that this is likely to be a problem for you is going to be the fact that NPCs can die in Dragon's Dogma 2. Not just your side character NPCs, but also your important NPCs. So it's going to be really important when events happen. Like, for instance, if you drag a bunch of mobs into town, they'll come into the town and then all of the NPCs in town will help you kill those mobs. But if your quest NPC is among the scuffle, there's a good chance that they're going to die if you're not standing there and protecting them. So keep your eye out for the important NPCs in town and make sure you're keeping them alive if ever there's a clash inside the town that an important NPC becomes involved in. There is a bit of good news here. If an NPC dies, it is possible to resurrect them using an item in the game. However, there is a but, and it's a really big but. You must resurrect the NPC that died within a few days of them dying. Otherwise, they'll perish forever. So be sure to protect the important NPCs, and if they do go down, make sure to res them within a few days of them dying to prevent them from disappearing forever. Now, there's a really unusual mechanic in Dragon's Dogma 2 that is applied straight from the very beginning of the game. It's one of the very first decisions you make, and that is what does your character look like? Is it tall? Is it short? Is it strong? Is it thin? These decisions are going to impact your character's in-game stats, believe it or not. So just be aware of the fact that if you make the character smaller, it's going to be quicker, more agile. If you make it taller, it's going to be able to carry more stuff if it's a larger character. If it's larger, it's going to be heavier. It's going to be easier for it to bring enemies down when it climbs on top of them. So there's going to be some pros and cons to every character size, and it's going to be up to you to pick the ones that you want to play with. The developers have said that there's no character or shape or size that's going to lock you out of any type of content, so it's not something that's going to brick your game, but it might be something that suits your playstyle a little more than the other if you design your character strategically. Now, speaking of carry weight, the amount of weight that you're carrying is also going to determine how fast you run out of stamina. So make sure you're not running around carrying a ton of gear when you don't have to be or a ton of campsites, right? Because you can carry campsites so that you can set them up when you're out in the wild. They're very heavy, so you don't want to be carrying too many of them at a time. Anytime you're carrying too much, you're going to be running out of stamina really fast. Another decision you're going to make right at the beginning of the game that's going to have very long lasting impact on your experience is going to be the fact that different mobs have different resistances to different types of damage. So if you're putting out tons of physical damage, it may be wise to have a pawn around that is putting out magic damage of some kind of element, right? Because you might run into a mob that has extreme resistance to physical, or you might run into a mob that is immune to fire damage. Now, if you're loving how realistic the pawns in this game are to RP with, have you ever wondered how awesome it would be to RP with real people? One State RP is making that easier than ever before. Now you can dive in on your phone. One State RP is a massive open world filled with real people. Some play as cops, some play as soldiers, while others form gangs to battle it out to be the strongest criminal empire in the game. Now is the perfect time to join in. One State just released its major update called It's Thuggin' Time, which is what added the ability for players to create their own gangs and compete with others to run the city. So grab a friend, start a gang, and compete for the title of Concrete Jungle King. Or if you'd rather, you can join an already mighty gang and climb to the top. One State also just added in Gang House and Gang Shop, where you can hang out with your crew or gear up for new challenges. Earn rewards not just for completing completing gang missions, but also for taking part in big scale events. The coolest part is that this all happens on a realistic map of America with incredibly optimized graphics. So download the game using my link in the description and don't forget to use my promo code for extra rewards. One State, create your own story. Shout out to One State RP for the sponsor and thank you for listening. Now let's get back to the video. Now another mechanic that's going to be important to understand in Dragon's Dogma 2 is the loss gauge. Every time you take damage, some portion of the damage that you take cannot be healed. In order to get that health back, you're going to have to go back to town and rest there or set up a campsite and rest there. So curatives and heals won't be able to recover the health that you lose in your loss gauge there. You'll be able to tell which health is recoverable and which health is not because there will be a white bar indicating the health that can be healed. And there will be a darker bar after that that indicates the health that cannot be recovered without going back to a campsite or going back to town to rest. Now, when you do set up a campsite, there's a few important things to know about it. One of which is, like I mentioned earlier, campsites are 
not terribly easy to come by and they weigh a lot. So you're going to want to use these intelligently. You're going to want to use them strategically, not just waste them, right? The game really wants you to feel the size of the world and it wants you to traverse through it as much as possible, which sometimes means going back to town to resupply. But one of the things you can do when you set up camp is cook food and just be aware of the fact that food can go bad. So don't cook way too much food, way more than you need or something like that, or you might risk it going bad on you before you have the opportunity to use it. The next item to be aware of is the fact that Dragon's Dogma 2 does have a day and night cycle. For the nighttime, you've got a couple of options. One, you can just go in blindly and, you know, not really be able to see, but also be less seen. So there's going to be a lantern that you can turn on while you're playing the game. But this lantern is likely to draw more attention to you and draw the attention of the enemies to you. So there is a little bit of a give and take with turning the lantern on. It's not all positive all the time. Sometimes it might be beneficial to leave it off. Now, there's another mistake that a lot of people are going to make, and this one's going to be big and it's going to feel bad when they make it. And that's the fact that quests continue even when you're not doing them. So if you get a quest to go save somebody and you get another quest to do something else and you get another quest to do something else and you go do the other two quests first and then you go to save that person last, by the time you get to them, they're probably dead. And so instead of finding a person alive that you can save, you'll find a corpse and you'll fail that quest and you'll never be able to get the reward and find out what would have happened otherwise. So try not to pick more quests up than you're capable of doing in a given time period. And definitely when something feels time sensitive, like if someone's life is in jeopardy and they've been captured, make that a priority. Tr trust your gut. And if something feels like time is of the essence, make sure to go and do that first. Because like we mentioned, there's only one save state. So if you let that person die, they're gone. This next one is just a general piece of advice that's going to be good to be aware of, and that's the fact that you're going to want to keep your eye out for maesters. Maesters are going to be these NPCs in the game that are going to help you unlock new vocations as well as unlock new skills for your existing vocation. So they're going to be great for enhancing your character's power, and you're definitely going to want to interact with these guys anytime you manage to find one. Now, like a lot of games, managing your stamina is incredibly important in Dragon's Dogma 2. However, unlike a lot of games, the punishment is severe when you do run out of stamina your character will go into an exhausted state and it will limp around barely able to move for what feels like an eternity now the upside is that if you have a pawn nearby they can come and they can pick you up and get you out of that exhausted state way sooner than you otherwise would have been able to but just know that you're going to want to prevent yourself from going all the way to zero stamina at all costs because it's got a massive downside to it another item that isn't immediately obvious in this game is the fact that changing out your pawns as you play through the game is going to be hugely beneficial for you and your group the reason is different pawns are going to have different sets of knowledge and when you pick up a pawn you're basically picking up someone else's main pawn right that's what a pawn is in this game it's someone else's main pawn so you make a main pawn and that's going to be with you all the time everybody else is going to make a main pawn and when you go to the stone and you recruit a new pawn you're recruiting someone else's main pawn and whatever they have done together that pawn will have that knowledge of that quest that monster type it's going to be able to give you advice based on what it has done with its primary owner if you will and so finding one that is incredibly knowledgeable is going to be hugely beneficial to you. It's going to be able to give you tips on where to go for quests or where to pick up treasure that they may have found together or what an enemy's weaknesses are, right? All of this knowledge can be acquired by that pawn with the other player and then transferred to you while you're exploring the world with that pawn. So be sure to listen to what the pawns say in Dragon's Dogma 2. It's incredibly helpful information that they're spewing out a lot of the time. Yeah, some of it's redundant and the developers have said they've done a lot to try to reduce the the amount of redundant information so you're not hearing the same thing like wolves hunt in packs like over and over again they've done a lot to try to reduce that repetition while also still having the pawns constantly dish out some really useful information for you if you find yourself stuck in the game maybe you've got a fight that you can't beat it's very likely one of the solutions is going to be to go and swap out your pawns and get pawns with different passives different vocations and different strengths to help you beat that battle if you're doing a quest and you're unsure if any of your pawns can guide you to the destination, you can open up the pawn menu and there's actually a line in the pawns menu that says yes or no to whether or not that pawn is a guide for the current quest that you're on. Fast travel in the game is very limited, but one form of fast travel that does exist is the fact that you can use the ox carts to basically go from one point to another. But be aware of the fact that when you decide to use these ox carts, it's not instantly a safe passage to the location. It's very likely that you're going to be attacked by bandits or animals or ogres or some kind of raid on the ox cart while you're traveling on it. So just be aware of the fact that it's not necessarily safe passage to the destination. You might be in for a fight if you ride the ox cart somewhere. 
Now, circling back to pawns, there is an interesting mechanic called the Dragon's Plague, and we don't fully know the extent of this thing yet, but basically when a pawn travels between worlds, it helps you and then it's helping someone else somewhere else in another game, right? It's going to pick up this thing called the Dragon's Plague, and this plague will manifest itself at first as a damage buff. You'll know that your pawn has the Dragon's Plague because its eyes will burn red. However, we don't know what the long-term ramifications of the Dragon's Plague are. The name sounds kind of dubious. It doesn't sound like it's going to be a wholly positive thing. So this is just something to be aware of. If you see that your one of your pawns has the Dragon's Plague, that's what's happening. That's what's going on. And that's what we know about it so far. This next tip is going to be one that's helpful for figuring out how to get places. A lot of times you're going to see a place that you can see, but you can't figure out how to get to. And the solution may very well be to use an enemy mob, either to climb on it and knock it down and traverse it as though it were a bridge, as we've seen them do with ogres and some of the footage, or to climb onto uh, one of the flying creatures and then ride it back to its nest. Just be aware of the fact that if you run out of stamina while riding a flying creature, you will fall and you'll likely die because fall damage in this game is pretty intense. So just be aware of the fact that if there's an enemy around that you can climb onto and hitch a ride on, it's probably worth doing at least once to see where it takes you. Another mistake that players are likely to make, and I don't even know if this one's a mistake as much as it is just a choice. It's a chance, it's a risk, and that's going to be that while you're playing the game, there's going to be items that you can forge. So if an NPC sends you out to collect an item, you can choose to go to another NPC and forge that item and then try to turn in the fake for the reward. Now, as you might have guessed, this isn't all good. So the thing to be aware of here is the fact that there are appraisers in this game. So if you go out and you get a forgery made, the NPC you're turning it into might decide to take it to the appraiser before giving you your reward. In Dragon's Dogma 2, I think one of the biggest hurdles for people to get used to is going to be the fact that it is basically the exact opposite of a Bethesda game in the fact that they don't want you to fast travel at all. They want you to have to run from one place to the next. And what they've done, their mentality and their philosophy is that if you make the journey from one place to another fun enough, then there's no need to have to fast travel to skip it. And so they've tried to set up all types of instance events treasures to find, side quests to discover, right? They've tried to set up all of this stuff in between A and B every time you're going from one place to another. So my advice is to embrace that. Every time you're having to run from one place to another and you're kind of like, ah, oh, man, I got to run all the way back. Just remember the devs thought of that and they've likely planted a lot of stuff between those two locations for you to discover. So listen to your pawns, keep your eyes open, look for treasures, look for secret caves, look for secret quests. There's likely multiple things for you to find between point A and point B. One of the hardest decisions you're going to have to make in your entire playthrough is the decision you make right off the bat. And that that's going to be choosing your vocation. Your vocation is going to determine so much about your experience and picking the right one for you is going to really have a massive impact on your experience. So if you haven't decided on which vocation you're going to play, make sure to check out the vocation guide linked in the description or popping up in the top of the screen right now. It's probably going to be right about there somewhere and that'll tell you absolutely everything you need to know about the vocations in the game so you can make the decision that's right for you. Massive shout out to my YouTube channel members. If you want to become a channel member for perks like having your name appear at the end of every video, behind the scenes footage, and a private Discord channel to hang out in, be sure to click the join button below or click the link in the description. If you're not sure what to do next, maybe check out one of these Dragon Dogma 2 videos popping up on screen right now. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.